It's about 8.30. Please rise while the colors are posted. And salute. Former Congressman Michael McNulty will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Please remain standing for our opening prayer. Brooke Levitt will lead us. Please be seated. <clears throat> Good morning. My name's Tim Forbes. I'm the chairman of the Rensselaer County Honor a Deceased Veteran Committee. We've gathered here this morning to honor a deceased Rensselaer County veteran for the month of July, and that, that veteran is Michael E. Peros, Sr. We're honored to have with us this morning his family, Susan Perro, his, his widow, Allison and Tim Denon, Michael Perro Jr., Remy and Maddox Denon, David McClure, Joy Morris, Debbie Faraka, Mary Denon, mother-in-law, Jack Vandal, Michaela, Coleman, and Rose Patton all. Thank you all for being here. Also with us today to honor our Veteran of the Month, representing Rensselaer County Executive Stephen McLaughlin is Sarah Holler, representing Elise Stefanik's office, Reed Cronus, representing Congressman Michael Tonko's office, Manic Elijah, former Congressman Michael McNulty, New York State Assemblyman Scott Bendit, a Rensselaer County Legislative Majority Leader and Chairman of the Legislative Veterans Committee, Ken Harrington, a Rensselaer County Under Sheriff, PJ Higgett, a Rensselaer County Court Judge, Deborah Young, representing Colonel Fisher from the Water Elite Arsenal is Aaron Kravitz. Also with us is Dan Casal, Ken Harrington, Mark Fleming, Tom Grant, Carol Weaver from the legislature. As we are all well aware, Memorial Day and Veterans Day are special days to remember all of our veterans. This program was created to help us honor our veterans all year round. To us here in Rensselaer County, every day is Veterans Day. The Rensselaer County Honor a Deceased Veteran Program represents veterans organizations, organizations throughout the entire county. This includes members of the American Legion, the Disabled American Veterans, the Veterans of Lansingburg, the Military Order of Purple Heart, the Marine Corps League, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, the Korean War Veterans, Tri-County Council Vietnam Era Veterans, Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association, the Vietnam Veterans of America, AMVETS, and our own Rensselaer County Veterans Service Agency. I will now ask Sarah Holler, well, actually, I, I'm not sure. Hold on, I made a mistake. Who's representing Kelly Hoffman? I'll now ask, uh, I'll now ask Ken Herring to come, come forward. Could be all right. 
all right, Tom, or do you want a chair? You all right? Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> uh, good morning. Uh, as said, I'm Ken Harrington, uh, Majority Leader and Chairman of the Veterans Committee of the Rensselaer County Legislature. I welcome each of you to our monthly honored deceased veteran ceremony. Rensselaer County has a rich history of veterans that have served our country dating back to the Revolutionary War. And our legislature has a history of honoring all that served with ceremonies like this and by permanent tribute, tributes that we have established in this chamber and around the county. Today, we gather to the honor and celebrate the remarkable life of Michael E. Perrell Sr. Born on October 3rd, 1954 in Troy, New York, Michael was the beloved son, of brother, husband, father, and dedicated public servant. Growing up in Troy, Michael was the son of James and Lois Perrell, with a younger brother named James Jr. He received his education at Sacred Heart School, Troy Public School 16, and later graduated from LaSalle Institute, 1973. Only a few weeks after graduation from LaSalle, Michael answered the call of duty, enlisted in the United States Army on June 30th, 1973, in Albany, New York. After com completing his basic training, Private Perrell attended military police school and was subsequently assigned to the 529th Military Police, who served in the, and he served in the United States Army of Europe. Michael spent most of his time serving his country in Europe, where he also attended the University of Maryland, Europe, during his time there. As the war ended, the, the 529th Military Police were involved in peace keeping security and training activities throughout Europe and Africa. After seven years with our Sheriff's Department, I'm reading, I hope we don't get this out of order. But after seven years with, with our Sheriff's Department, he joined Detroit's Police Department. I may have one of these out of uh, After seven years with our Sheriff's Department, he joined the Troy Police Department in 1983, where he served diligently for over three decades. Throughout his tenure, Michael held various ranks, ranging from patrolman to evidence technician. In 2003, he earned the rank of sergeant, and in 2005, he was assigned to the Detective Bureau, contributing significantly to the department until his retirement in 2018. During his 34-year career with the Troy Police, he earned more than 60 letters of accommodation for not, not worth, noteworthy performance and also received the Silver Shield Award for Heroism in the, and con, Converted Covenant John J. Giveney Memorial Award. Now I got one of these out of order, so please bear with me. I said even after... They didn't number my pages there. <laughs> it says that. I read this one, right? <laughs> Even after retiring, Michael continued to contribute to his community. He continued working as a, as a death investigator with the Rensselaer County Health Department. Michael joined our Health Department Medical Examiner's Office on January 7, 2002, and worked there for 17 years until he passed away. His colleagues there called him a founding father who de developed programs and procedures that are still used today. He was, a he was a forensic investigator. He earned the nickname Dr. Death because he was called to countless scenes of death to perform investigations into the cause of death and to collect evidence, to collect evidence and participate in autopsies. Michael was passionate about, passionate about uh, local youth sports activities, participating in Lansingburg Little League, Pop Warner football. He was familiar with face, face on any sports, familiar face on any sports in Lansingburg and was always ready to lend a helping hand to give coaching advice or simply telling a quick story about his life experiences. His presence was appreciated by many. Mike's des designation extended beyond coaching. He helped he held leadership positions with Pop Warner football, serving as commissioner, capital district president, and member of the Eastern Region staff up until the final days. Michael and Susan raised three children, two sons, Michael Jr., 
and Joshua and a daughter, Allison. Family was utmost importance to Michael. He cherished every moment spent with his wife, children, and his grandchildren, Remy and Maddox. Sadly, on October 13th, 2019, Michael passed away, leaving behind a legacy of love, service, and devotion. He is finally remembered by his wife of 40 years, Susan, his children, Allison, Michael, Jr., Joshua, as well as grandchildren. Michael was predeceased by his parents, James, Jr., and Lois, and his brother, James, James Sr., and his Lois, and his brother, James, Jr. I would like to thank Susan and her family for allowing us to pay tribute to the remarkable life of her husband, Michael E. Perrell, whose selfishness, selflessness and integrity and commitment to the community forever remembered and cherished. May his legacy inspire all of us to serve others in a positive, and a positive impact on the world around us. Um, I think I left out. No, I don't. <laughs> um, I didn't read this one page, and I'm sorry about that. Specialist fourth class Peril was discharged from the United States Army on June 23, 1976, at Fort Dix, New Jersey. In recognition of his commitment and service, Specialist fourth class Peril received several accolades and medals, including the National Defense Service Medal, the Good Conduct Medal, the Expert Marksman Badge with Grenade Bar, the Marksman Badge with a 45 caliber bar, and Sharpshooter Badge with M19 bar. It is clear that Michael Perrell made a lasting positive impact that is evidenced by all of his friends and colleagues that are here this morning. Thanks also to Troy Police Department and their color guard for helping us pay tribute to Michael Perrell this morning. And I understand Tom, Tom, Tom is uh, on the county committee and held this job of mine for 20 years probably. <laughs> so Colonel Walsh wants to say a few words. Thank you, Ken. I want to thank the family of Michael for, for coming today. It's a good good turnout for Michael. He certainly should be an honor today with you just being here. Um, Michael certainly uh, had picked the right branch there when he, he picked the military police. He got a lot of tr good training there. And he was with a, a group, excuse my voice is breaking up, uh, but he, he uh, he got good training there with that, that group, and they, they were out protecting all our military installations over in Europe, which was a very big thing at that time, and it still is. Um, and, uh, Michael did made a good start there. He was with the Rensselaer County Sheriff's Department. I worked down there for a while, too, but not as a deputy. Um, and I guess a lot of the Troy police officers started off there too. And I, I know the chief did. I was talking to him earlier. Um, we have a, a, what we call our wall of heroes over there and uh, on, on the wall over here. And Michael's name will be on a plaque for this year, all the veterans that are being honored this year. So again, I want to thank you and uh, good luck to all of you. This time, uh, one of our le any legislators would like to speak. Yeah, Mark Fleming, county legislator, uh, same age as Michael. Uh, I know him growing up a little bit, but uh, I became a fireman. He was a police officer. Our paths crossed many times. I found him to be uh, a uh, compassionate uh, police officer of integrity. You know, good guy. Uh, but later in life, I also knew his brother Jimmy uh, a little better, and. Um, I used to hang around with Jim at the uh, barber shop slash uh, clubhouse on Walker Avenue, uh, the family home near the family homestead. And uh, Jim had uh, diabetes and lost his uh, lower extremities, his feet and lower legs to uh, to the disease. And he had a prosthetic device put in. And so I saw him afterwards, and he said, uh, "I said, how's it working out?" He said, "Good." I said, uh, "You know what? How was the procedure?" Blah blah blah. And he said, uh, "The." Uh, uh, doctor asked me um, how tall I want to be, 
And he goes, uh, I don't know, really? He goes, yeah, yeah, I could make you a little taller if you wanted. And he goes, I'd like to be as tall as my brother, Michael. And uh, I said, did you really have that done? He said, yes. I said, well, how's it working out? And he said, I still look up to Michael in every way. And I think that's noteworthy of a person who has uh, uh, intimate knowledge of another person and still finds him to be uh, uh, respectable and uh, a person that they love and uh, admire. So that's a, a loss to Rensselaer County in the city of Troy for all the service that Michael has done. And uh, I'm happy to be here to honor him. I will present the proclamation to Susan and the family. Thank you all. <clears throat> I will now ask Sarah Holler, representing Rensselaer County Executive Steve McLaughlin, to come forward. Ladies and gentlemen, county legislators, distinguished guests, and honored veterans. Today we gather here to celebrate the remarkable accomplishments and dedications of an exceptional individual who has not only served our county with distinction, but has also answered the call of duty to defend our nation. It's my privilege to stand here today as a representative of our county executive, Steve McLaughlin, to honor Mr. Michael E. Perro Sr., who was not just my colleague, but my mentor, and most importantly, my very dear friend. Mike exemplified the highest ideals of selflessness, courage, and sacrifice. Throughout his career, Mike demonstrated a remarkable, unwavering commitment with an unparalleled work ethic that inspired those around him. He served with honor and integrity, always going above and beyond the call of duty to ensure the success of his mission, regardless of what his mission was. His dedication to excellence was evident in every task he undertook. I had the privilege to work alongside Mike as a medical legal death investigator for nine years. He took the time to train employees and granted many educational opportunities whenever one arose. Mike embraced an eager mind willing to learn and held his protégés to a very high standard. He had an uncanny ability to combine his expertise as an investigator with a bright sense of humor that brought smiles to the faces of everyone around him. It's impossible to ignore the valuable lessons that Mike has taught us. He possessed a deep understanding of the complexities of law enforcement, and his guidance shaped many into the skilled professionals we are today. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to have worked with Mike and will be forever indebted to him for encouraging me to always think critically, to question assumptions, and to approach every case with an open mind. His stern words of Sarah, don't ever let him see you sweat, will be forever engraved in my heart. Thank you, Mike, for the confidence and believing in me to do the job that you expected me to do. Professionally, Mike received the Silver Shield and John Givney Officer of the Year Award. He served the Rensselaer County Sheriff and joined the Troy Police Department as a patrolman and evidence technician, and then sergeant in the Detective Bureau. Mike was also, also actively involved and employed with the Rensselaer County Department of Health and as medical legal death investigator, where you've heard he was known as Dr. Death, right up until the day God called him home. However, it's not only his professional accomplishments that we're here to acknowledge today. We're here to rec recognize Michael's profound contributions as a veteran who selflessly served our country in times of great need, 
This brave man answered the nation's call, leaving behind the comforts of home and loved ones to protect the freedom and values we hold so dear. As I present Michael's family with this proclamation on behalf of County Executive Steve McLaughlin, let us remember that behind every uniform, every medal, and every act of heroism, there is a person, a person who put their life on the line for the greater good. Today, we recognize my very dear friend, Michael E. Perro Sr., not only for his exceptional service to the city of Troy, to the county of Rensselaer, but also for his selfless dedication to our great nation. I'm proud to present this proclamation to the family of Mike and offer my sincerest gratitude for his dedication and service. Thank you, Sarah. I'll now ask Reed Cronus from Congresswoman Elise Stefanik's office and Manik Alaya from Congressman Paul Tonko's office to come forward. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first, a, uh, I want to say thank you to the family for allowing us to be here and honor Mr. Perro today. On behalf of Congresswoman Stefanik, it's with great, deep gratitude and respect that we acknowledge Mr. Perro's public service both at home and abroad and his invaluable contributions to the city of Troy, Rensselaer County, as well as our country. Not too long ago, uh, we were all celebrating Independence Day, a day that we all celebrate. It's a time when we began a long and enduring path of protecting freedoms. As we all know, freedom is not free. And individuals like Mr. Perro are essential to the continued protection of that freedom, and we should all be thankful for that. On behalf of the Office of Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, uh, we present this flag previously flown over the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., a certificate of authenticity, uh, as well as a congressional record here uh, that will be read into the congressional record by the Congresswoman. Thank you all. Thank you both. I will now ask New York State Senator Jake Ashby to come forward. Good morning. Thanks, Tim, and uh, thank you to Lonnie and everybody for coming out this morning. Thank you to the family for being here. You know, there are a few things that struck me in, uh, in Michael's bio is that, you know, he started setting the example early on. You know, joining, uh, joining the Army uh, during that time, from what I've been told by, uh, by many people, wasn't necessarily a popular thing to do. But it was something that he believed in. Uh, it was something that he thought was the right thing to do. Uh, and he was setting the example then. And then from, you know, 73 to 2018, a 45-year career in law enforcement and celebrating a 40th wedding anniversary. Take into account all of those things, all of the people that you know. How many can cross all of those things off their list? All of those accomplishments, all of those traditions that I'm sure are still resonating in your family today. It's, it's a remarkable, remarkable example, a remarkable life. I'm proud to be able to honor him today, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to do so. On behalf of the New York State Senate, I have a proclamation here for you. Thank you.
Thank you, Jake. Senator. I'll now ask New York State Assemblyman Scott Bendat to come forward. It truly is a remarkable life. Um, I think Jake hit it right on the head. Somebody who uh, volunteered to join the uh, army at the, still during the Vietnam War when many people were coming home and being spit at and being, uh, you know, talked about in not the most positive light, he did step up and answer the call. And then to be a uh, law enforcement officer for 45 years serving his community, again, is just remarkable. And every month we talk about this, about all the remarkable people from where we live. Um, but now I know the real reason why Troy had such a great football team after all these years. Um, obviously, his commitment to the football program was pretty epic also, and it looks like his legacy went on not only through law enforcement and helping people and through the death examinations, but also through all the youth that he helped, um, you know, uh, just grow up, learning all the life lessons, going to college, doing all of those different things and offering those kids all the opportunity. So as much as he's touched so many people through law enforcement, I think he was really a true community leader. And, uh, and like Jake said, I mean, some of the things that I'm most proud of is being with my wife for my life. And I think that that's also really uh, a tremendous example of living the life the right way. So thank you. And on behalf of myself, John McDonald, and all 19 and a half million people from New York State, we'd like to honor Michael also and give you a citation today. Thank you, Scott. I'll now ask Aaron Kravitz, representing Colonel Fisher of the Water Valley Arsenal, to come forward. Distinguished guests, friends, family, thank you for allowing us to come here and recognize Mr. Paro. Unfortunately, Colonel Fisher was unable to be here due to a prior commitment. And sometimes I think fate may intervene. I never met Mr. Paro um, prior to coming in here, but as soon as I looked at his bio, I, I felt a kindred spirit. From 2011 to 2012, I commanded the 529th MP Company in Europe. Um, just so happens to be the fact that I came here in, in Colonel Fisher's stead. Um, for those of those you who don't know, the 529th uh, MP Company is the USERA Honor Guard. They are the tip of the spear. They are selected personally by the four-star general for their professionalism, their abilities, and who they are. So being able to stand here and know that we're recognizing another fellow Honor Guard member, it, it's, it, it's my honor. Um, on behalf of Colonel Fisher, the men and women of the arsenal, um, we have a small certificate to recognize his service to this country. And may we all strive to live a, wor a life worthy of his sacrifice. Thank you, Aaron. Please stand for our closing prayer followed immediately by taps.
retire the colors. And salute. Two. This concludes our honor of that ceremony for this month. Thank you all for coming to honor our deceased veteran of the month of July, Michael E. Perro, Sr. Please join us for our next honor of veteran ceremony scheduled for August 14th. Before we go our separate ways, we'll take a few family pictures, and then the flag will be raised at a different time and presented later. Thank you all. May I have your attention, please? Uh, the Troy police are invited to, in the Sheriff's Department, to come up here for the photo with the family if you would like to.